one. Happy New Year to uh, my new listeners. Um, don't expect 2021 to get magically better. Nothing changes if you don't. So, um, or if it, anything does change around you when you're not changing, it's probably going to change for the worse. Or just stay stagnant. Um, so, 2021 definitely, not just 2021. I don't care about the date. I don't care what day it is. Every day you want to try and get better. So, um, and then on top of that, <laughs> you you get you get what you give. You're gonna get out, uh, you're gonna get out of 21 what you give to 2021. Um, me this year, my goal is as I was just saying, growing this channel. Um, I just got another job. I wanna, you know, perform well there. You know, make my little money there. Save that up for certain things that I'm looking forward to buying that'll help improve my channel. Um, help improve my investments, which is my third goal. I want to um, improve my knowledge on trade options because that's a, another. Um, mm -hmm. Yup, mm -hmm. I, I finally leveled up and got access to them. And um, what I do understand, I want you guys to understand this. And I'm glad that I'm talking about this because I was looking over this stuff the past couple of days. Somebody asked me about trading on the stock market, and one of the first things I told them was, "Look." I can't promise you that you're going to make money. I can't promise you anything, really. But I want you to know that, you know, it is a pretty good investment. Once you start to get the hold of it, it's something that you kind of got to learn as you go along. What, what, um, read that. This is about options. Uh-huh. Um, it's about options. Keep going. What's it called? So, before I get into that, trade options, I'm going to explain this to you guys. Trade options versus regular stock. All right. When you're talking regular stock and buying shares of Facebook, um, Amazon, whatever, name any company, you buy one share at a certain price. So say I want to buy six shares of Facebook. I would buy six shares of Facebook at an average price of like, this is a fake number, of, like 300, yeah, like $300. And... Remember, each share is going to be $300 unless, you know, the stock market goes up or down. Now, trade options is when I could buy 100 shares at a discount. And that discount's no joke. But once again, I have to buy that 100 shares. For example, let's say Facebook. $300 is going to get me one share. But if I buy a contract, um, I think it's called buying a call. Um, if I buy a call for 100 shares of Facebook, let's say I spend $122 for 100 shares of Facebook. I don't know what the exact fraction would be, mm -hmm. but they would. I think it shows up as Facebook. Like, I know this is not the correct math. It's going to say Facebook, one-tenth, 100 shares, and that one-tenth is the discount. And then, contract. right, and they, they call that the strike price. And basically, if, if um, it's pretty much like, I don't, I don't like to say this. It's like placing a bet. It's kind of like gambling. If, if, it, if it works out, you're going to make some serious money depending on how much you put into it. But if it doesn't, you lose out. The best thing about it, though, is it, it's unlike the, the regular stock market. If I put in a dollar into a certain stock and then it loses 50 cents, I lost 50 cents. But say I bought 100 shares of a certain um, stock via trade options, then the most I can lose is $100. So it doesn't matter if the stock goes down and I and I called the bet wrong. I can only lose that $100. I can't lose 101 I can't lose 102 I can only lose that $100, but I can make whatever, you know, that that uh thing yes. is set at. One thing about options, my son is correct. We talked about this, I don't know if he remembered, when he was about 15 or 16. Around that with time. trade options? Yeah. Yeah. But um, Robin Hood, I think you have to trade with them for a little bit before they give you access mm -hmm. to it. Probably because they want you to learn a lot more about stock before some fool, you know, tells you you should hop into this and throw $300 at the... Yeah, that's, that's just, um, that's just law. That's just, um, laws on the books. You cannot buy and sell options unless you have a certain amount of experience with the stock oh, market right. because you can lose... Copious amounts. Yeah, you yeah. can lose your shirt. And one <laughs> thing, if you don't understand the options market and it goes against you, 
you you are responsible for thousands of dollars that you don't even have on the books. Mm -hmm. And trust me, they're coming to get your money. Um, what's it called? About the um trading and everything. Look out for those forex traders. Forex as um forex is its own broker, right? Forex is fine. Forex is great. It's a broker like any other broker. Robinhood, um, stock, tra um, um, Scott Trade, um, what's the other one? Um, TD Ameritrade. Yeah. You have E Trade. Right. There's there's all kinds of brokers. I I, I have no beef with forex. But the Forex trader guys that say, give me $300 and I'll teach you how to get a million, look out for those guys. Because it's, it's a pyramid scheme. It's a scam. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's just, look out for that. Because nothing's guaranteed on the stock market. So like be very I, careful. Like I always taught my son and anybody else, I talk about stocks. Do your own due research. diligence. For real. A stock tip is just what it is. And it's, it's funny. Tip. All those guys that talk about join my team and you'll make millions, their life is a lie and a farce on Instagram. Now, it's, it, it's the guys that are really making money. And this is going to sound funny. It's the guys that are really, really making money that say on their video when, they, when they're about to give you tips on how to make money, they always start off by saying, I'm no expert. I don't even know what I'm doing. But... And then they give you whatever they learn because what people don't understand, there's not you don't learn the stock market. They want to quit your nine to five job. Yeah, people that's like that. The first thing that's off. You can't you can't make money off money if you don't have a job. Right. Work like that. When um, what, what was I saying? I forgot. Um, what was I saying? They have a very good market employ, no matter how it comes across. If they're selling, if they're selling stuff to you. Over the internet, that's where their money is coming from. Right. You over right. the internet. Exactly. It's not coming from Forex. I mean, it could be. Who know? They could be taking the money that you're giving them and then putting it into the stock market. Right. Really, that, that's how that really goes. Right. Um, you're not making money. You're giving it to them. But what I was about to say is, um, shoot, if you... It's the guys that are making money that always say on the stock market. The guys that are making money on the stock market that always say that they don't really necessarily know what they're doing. They're learning as they go along. And that's because that's the stock market. If you're not ready to adapt and you're not letting, ready to learn something else, then you're, you're going to lose money. Sometimes it's about having a little bit of faith and just kind of watching patterns too. There's, there's an analytical part to it. There's a, a patience part to it. There's a lot that goes into it. But um, me personally, the advice I would give for somebody my, my age... Um, if you work, you know, a little part-time job, take your money that you, you know, you have your bills, whatever you do with that money, but have some money to the side that's specifically for the stock market. I wouldn't dig into your savings or anything like that and throw it into the stock market because once again, I wouldn't want you to put yourself in that position. I think that you should build up a little bit of, um, you know, money, put that into the stock market, play around with it and see what happens. So at least if you do lose money, you knew that money was for the sole purpose of learning how to play with the stock market. Mm -hmm. So, it's a pretty also, good investment. Well, you can also do this. TD Ameritrade has what they call paper trades, which you can actually simulate you buying and selling in the stock mm -hmm. market, and it's just a simulation. It's you just don't a simulation. put no money, no money down, nothing. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and then so also, you're learning that way. I like to use Robinhood. I use Robinhood because it's zero dollars commission. Um, pretty easy to use. I use it on my phone. And um, yeah, it's just easy to have in your pocket, right? You know, go open your app, put your fingerprint, password, eye, eye scan, whatever you want to do. And yeah, and then they also have the articles. Um, Robinhood always has articles about stocks, um, which stocks are growing. They give pretty deep analytics. Um, once again, they have the trade options. You can... Um, some, of the new, some of the news articles that they have... Um, Talk about the advice that like Warren Buff, Warren Buffett, and guys on that level, they tell they tell us when they're selling or buying or stuff like that. Um, they show you the dividend yields. They they show you um, when you could. Um, I think what is it? Sales calls or something like that, or conference calls. You mm -hmm. can um, you can get access to the conference calls. It, it's a great service. So yeah, if you're if you're looking into the stock market, that's um, something you should hop hop into. Uh, back into the 2021 topic. 
moderate all kinds of media. I'm not talking about social media or the TV. I'm talking about all of it. Um, even books. You know, people always say, you know, why don't you just read a book sometimes? Some people read books that can dement their mind. And that's just a fact. A book is no different than, I mean, of course it's different than TV and stuff like that. But what's the difference between reading a bio, uh, uh, a bio, excuse me, what's the difference between watching a biography on TV and reading some nonsense in a book? What's the difference between reading a biography and watching some nonsense on TV? What's the difference between, you know what I'm saying? Like, It's the mindset. Basically what you're saying is a mindset. Exactly. You, 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 you'll find what you're looking for, basically. Whether, whether you're searching um, in books or on t- TV or whatever. YouTube. Right. Personally, I like to read and I like to um, you know, get my sources from the internet. Whoever you are will surface, whoever you really are will surface under stress. Right. Um, also, when I say moderate your media, my sister might hop on me about this one. Watch what you're listening to. Um, and when you're listening to music, um, I like it to listen. Like, I listen to rap and stuff like that, but I understand the violent nature of it, the, the self-idolatrous nature of it. So, I, I know how to just listen to the music, enjoy the beats, enjoy the lyrics, whatever. But there's some people that really don't have a buffer between what they're listening to and what they do as a direct correlation of what they just heard. Like, there's some people that really will go outside and fight somebody because they heard a song. There's some people that... Start breaking down crying because of certain hurts they uh, certain songs they heard or um that song WAP I don't know if you know that song WAP yeah, we you know it W A P yeah um I mean if if you like that song which I don't I don't know how anybody can like that song I think the song's whack number one and um number two it's not whack it, it's just raunchy it's derogatory yeah and then on top. I, I'll never understand women that say that we disrespect them, but then listen to songs like WAP. As far as I'm concerned, you're double-minded and get out my face. But, um, yeah. Just be careful, um, you know, what you listen to, what you read to. Even even um, who you communicate with. Mm-hmm. So, your friends and family, bro. Like, you gotta, you gotta look out. Um, live your life this year. And don't live what the media says... Your life is or what your life will be What I mean by that is um, Especially I grew up In the generation of I'm not saying I'm a 90's baby But 2000 to I would say and, any, Anybody Born from 90's babies are probably like born in the 80's So like not How do I say that? 90's kids Excuse me 90's kids were probably born in the 80's So all right, I would I would say there's there's a certain segment of us that kind of group into the ninety kids era, and I would say that's anybody from like ninety ninety five to like two thousand. I would say two thousand three. I would say any if you were born from ninety five to two thousand three, we grew up in a in a on a generational cusp. We saw a lot of the stuff going on in the 90s or we felt the effects of culture in the 90s and we were being brought up and raised in a generation that was being moved by TV um, and the internet. So I now know how to control or I'm getting better control over my thoughts and what I want to focus on as I maneuver throughout my life. But people get so caught up in going to... Just doing certain things that they would have never thought about doing because they take the TV too seriously. You know how many people wouldn't be at these protests if they didn't see it on TV or on Instagram? How many people wouldn't have tried to pursue certain life choices because they didn't see it on TV or Instagram? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's all I mean by live your life and not what media says it's going to be or what anybody says it's going to be. Don't get caught up in victimhood. Don't get caught up in... um. That should be your next time. I think we I think we bashed victim victimhood a, a, a lot. I, anyway, but yeah, live your life, guys. Um, be guard your emotions. 
Um, I don't think everything and everyone should have access to your emotions. Um, once again, that runs back to the TV and everything like that. And set standards for yourself. Because what I noticed is the people being manipulated are the people that really have no standards. Um, or they or they expect too... They either expect too little or they expect too much. Um, for the liberals, they just expect too, too little. Um, and by that, I mean... They're down for whatever. They, 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 they almost expect people to be victims in whatever minority you're a part of or whatever is afflicting you. That's what they're going to help you fight for. Conservatives, they expect too much. They expect everybody to be perfect or everybody to be like them. And that, that can really damage reality for you. And it can allow reality to shatter whatever world you created in your head. It happens to all of us. As humans, we create these worlds in our head that come shattering down once reality hits. And we need to moderate what's reality and what when we're creating a world in our own head. Um, check your values and your merit. Um, make sure the stuff that you talk about and the stuff that you really fight for is based in truth. And uh, you're not out there trying to hurt anybody. Um, yeah. And don't fall for everything. In, in 2021 2020 is not The only year of trauma There's gonna be more And there was years of trauma Before 2020 They somehow made you think that <laughs> 2019 and before Were any better Than uh, 2020 The only difference is Now there's some people Sitting at home And Yeah But if, if you Keep doing what you were doing Before 2020 Everything is pretty much the same Except you gotta wear a mask Um yeah, this next section you probably don't know too much about, so I'm going to probably save that for another podcast. Can I sum up everything you just said? Yep. Young America, this is how I want to sum up his last segment. In order to mature... There's two things, a few things you need to do. Number one, listen to your elders. Number two, the world is not a candy store. You're not going to get everything you want whenever you want it. Number three, have a foundation of faith. Number four, Reality is scary. That's why a majority of the people, young and old, love fantasy. It eliminates reality. Number five, you have to trust somebody. If you put those things into perspective, you may not be that astronaut you turned out to be but you may have a, a club that you can start that is into out of space and astrology that's maybe where you wind up you may not have been a professional sport player but you can run a sports team in your neighborhood for the youth you may not have been a, a Fortune 500 business owner, but you got that side hustle that everybody wants legally. And number six, that perfect girl, that perfect guy that you were meeting may not have been for you. The very person that everybody expected you to have may not be for you. The least likely person that loves you the most is the one for you. And that's all that I have to say. All right. I think that wraps it up. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram and to support the Cash App. I'll see you guys in the next video.